welcome to the Heron Project on how to RC. This is, of course, a modified uh, version of the Polaris seaplane, redesigned from the original North Star, which was a balsa plane. gas engine, and this will be an electric power. Welcome to How to RC and the Heron Project. This is my modification of the popular foam RC electric airplane, the Polaris. Um, you may have wondered how I was brave enough to start making a, a full plane with a 40 inch wingspan. And this is the explanation. You can see that I've now glued the fuselage down to the wing, glued the wing tips on, the tip floats. My little block foams here just mean that the weight's resting on the main part of the wing. I've mounted the pylon and started the motor nacelle and I glued the top of the fuselage down and I got to trim some of the glue up here. And this is how I dared to do a 40 inch wingspan with 6 millimeter depth on. I had intended right along to do a KF step, Klein Fogelman airfoil. And I knew I would be putting two wing spars in, um, and I had decided to do them out of uh, wood. This is, this is cedar, and it's very light. And I decided that uh, in order to get a good glue bond with the, uh, the next piece of foam that's going to be the wing cover, I put a half inch strip of six millimeter Depron along the leading edge of the wing and uh, so I'll be gluing the, the skin for the wing on there. This is it. I haven't trimmed it yet. But basically it's going to go on like this and then curve down like that and then be trimmed. It'll just come just a little bit past the second spar, and it's going to be a, a wing, an airfoil, a wing shape. The nacelle was glued on with epoxy. The fuselage and the wing were glued together with Gorilla Glue. See the foam in there? The way Gorilla Glue foams up. And uh, I can't put this on until I run the wires up to the motor. And the extension servo for the uh, uh, servo extension wire for the elevator servo that's going to be located up here. And uh, now, remember all those bulkheads we had in here? up in here. There's one here, one here, and one here. And now uh, the wing has joined the battery tray. And those compartments, the one, two, three compartments in here, are now completely sealed and watertight. So that if you happen to do a <coughs> lawn dart landing, the water is going to be able to get in here maybe if your hatch leaks over the battery tray, but um, it won't be able to get into the bottom part of the plane. I'm going to have to have a couple of holes down here to bring the, the wire for the servo extension up and the wires for the motor leads that go to the speed controller which will be located up here someplace. So that if the plane sits upside down 
and any water gets in they sell, it can go right up the wire chase. Out here, and then right up into the main body of the frame through these, uh, the main body of the fuselage through these wire uh, holes and get most everything wet. But if you just do a simple nose first splash, it should pop right up and won't bother anything a bit. You shouldn't take on any water. Later on I'll show you how to waterproof all the electronics so that even if it does sit upside down, when you get there to rescue it, all you have to do is hold it up, let the water drain out, put it back down on the water and she'll take right off and fly again like nothing ever happened.